We're going to go straight to the corn. You need to know this. We are at the point where it's time to do a checkup. Now, I've been at this for about, oh, maybe 20, 25 minutes. And I want to give you a look inside so you can see what we have developed since uh, I last saw you. You see that? Now, that is some real thick flake corn. And you see, it's just like a porridge. It's really thick. That's what we're looking for. Now, again, this was four gallons of water and five pounds of corn. So you can see how much water that that uh, corn soaks up. What's next, you ask? Well, we're going to let this sit. I mean, it's not going to get any worse, and it probably won't get any better, but i got some time on my hands. So I've already, this is about 25 minutes or so, and I'm going to let this sit for another 10 or 15 minutes just to soak up everything it possibly can. What is our next step? Because we're at 209, as a matter of fact. Um, so what's our next step? You're right, we've got to cool it. And uh, there's some ingenious ways of doing that, but we're going to cool this down before we add any of the amylase enzyme because this is only active right at 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, there's a window there, but look, man, just use 155 as your mark. If you can get it at 155, you're good to go, okay? A little too hot, up to about 165 in, you inoculate it. You, you render it unusable, okay? Anything below about 145, it's just not going to be active. So 155 is, uh, is your sweet spot. So get it to 155 and use your amylase. Now remember how thick that, it's still just as thick as it was a little earlier. And we are just about at that point. Now, we've got a couple of different options here. One is, I can just leave the pot sit and allow that to cool off on its own. And that's going to take quite a while. Uh, I could put a, if you're a beer brewer, I could put a wart chiller in there and cool it. That's another method. You know, a clean, sanitized wart chiller, because you know, now you're trying to be a little bit more clean. Uh, I've got some freezer bags with ice. Now, I could just throw ice in there. You know, eight pounds of ice is about a gallon of water, okay? Well, I could just throw ice in there to cool it down, but then that would really start to dilute it a whole lot, and I wanted, I, I wanted to convert that corn first and then sparge, you know, the rinse. That's how I want to introduce more water. So I just put some ice cubes in a freezer bag and drop those in there. Now, it'll take several iterations of that, but at some point, I'm going to bring that down to about 155 degrees. Bear with me. I'll be back when it gets there. Now, I've done a little shifting around. I'm at 155 degrees, but now let's check our starch content. And all that takes is one drop of iodine. Now, see, I, whoop, I poured that on the spoon. And I drop a drop. You notice how black that gets. No matter what I do to it, it stays black. It's just a god-awful color. It's just really, really dark. Now, that shows me the presence of starch. And if that starch was not there, I could drop a drop in there, shake it, it would start to dissipate. So that's, uh, that's my challenge now. Uh, and that's what I'm shooting for. All I've got, that's the only way I can test it at the very end. But um, I already know that the next step, what I'm going to do, is going to do that. And that is to add my alpha amylase. Now, I've got this thing at... 155 degrees uh, and it will remain such for turn that back yep for a, quite a while um, more than enough time for those starches to be converted to fermentable sugars now this says it takes one of uh, 0.1 to 0.3 teaspoons per gallon and I've got four gallons in here give or take and uh, so I'm going to use just about a teaspoon and 
uh, this is one of those you don't have to get real specific. Uh, enough is enough. So, and again, our corn is just as thick as it was before we cooled it, if not a little thicker. So what I'll do is I'm going to add this amylase and then I'm going to uh, mix it. I'm just going to mix it around in the corn and allow that to sit. There we go. And allow that to do its job. Now, the, your, your conversion, most of your conversion takes place in the first 20, 30 minutes. But we allow it to sit there for at least 60 minutes, up to 90 minutes, just to make sure that it's all finished. So, what I'll do now, see, and this would be the time, but you would need more water that you would put in the two-row barley if you were not using the amylase, okay? This would be the time. But remember, you'd have to have more water in there for that to take place. It, we don't have that much water, so we're just going to use the amylase that I can get out of a little jar there. Okay. I shall put the lid on that. Ah, sit back and relax. We are going to wait for that to happen. And when it does, we will be back and we'll test it. Okay. Well, you're ready to see the results. Let me show you what we've got. Remember how thick that was? Look at it now. We've extracted um, some of that out of there. And now this is the liquid. And I want to show you what the results are now because, and I've got it in a shot glass so it's a little bit easier to see. But if we drop in a drop and you look at that, give it a shake, and look at it dissipate. And it almost turns to just like a light, lightish purple color. That is an indicator of starches converted to fermentable sugars. Now that we've got our conversion complete, and I've got this thing lifted and set, um, it's time to just start rinsing. Uh, now this is how we're going to add the liquid necessary to uh, ferment, and at the same time we're using this to rinse out all of those fermentable sugars out of those out of that flake corn. This will take a while only because it's a flake product. That's that's why flake corn, it's not, it's good, but it's it's kind of difficult to use because it, it is, oh, it gets so mushy that uh, it kind of compacts. You hear that? So you, you move it around a little bit and it starts to run through. So we'll be back shortly. You know, I get excited every time I do this. This is so cool. Um, I'm using cold water now um, to rinse sparge, rinse the grains, because my, my next step is to ensure that I can drop the temperature down now. I've got to get down below 90 so I can pitch yeast when the time comes. So I just use cold water to do that. It just makes sense. I've also already added a five pound bag of sugar. Now, I took a um, a hydrometer reading and did the correction factors. I'm at 1.029. Wish it would have been a little bit higher. That means my efficiency is a little bit off. Uh, that's okay. But, you know, the, the interesting thing is that, look, you're going to get dirty or messy. Uh, but the interesting thing is, is that you can feel um, as you stick your hand in there and pull it out, and it all, it's sticky. Um, you can tell when you've converted from starches to sugars because you can feel it. Um, and this is going to get all over. Don't be afraid to stick your hand in there. Um, I like using the paddle, but uh, sometimes it just takes a... 
a hand. Um, it, right now, I've just got this mess of a all this flake corn that's left over, and all this is really is just like the fibrous portion of it because uh, all the starches are gone as much as I could get, and they're converted as much as I could convert them. And uh, wow. All I got to do now is just add this to the fermenter. Get it at the right temperature, add it to the fermenter. But one last thing, and don't forget to remind me. Yeah, we got to gotta check the pH one more time just to make sure that we're in the right ballpark. Okay. Oh, yep, one more break. I'll be right back. Now that we're at this stage, see, I used the uh, false bottom or, you know, one of the, oh, yeah, one of them bottoms from my uh, rice cooker. And I just kept pushing down and pushing, and I squeezed all of those sugars out, poured more, and did the same thing. And I'm right now, I'm a little over five gallons in here. I've just about filled it. Uh, so, but I wanted to show you this. This is the re this is what's left over. And uh, so, what is that good for? It's uh, it's not really going to do you any good. Uh, and can you firm it? Leave this in it? Yeah, you sure can. Hey, look, it, wh whatever turns you on. Whatever floats your boat. Um, but now that it's got some, it, of course, it's unrealistic to think I've got every bit of the sugars out of here. So there are some sugars, okay? And so what does this make? This is a perfect environment for uh, some bacterial growth. Hmm, I'm thinking sour mash. Now, throw this into a bucket. You know, leave it open for just a little bit. Put the lid on, let it sit there for a couple days. Excuse me. It will sour. You take that and reintroduce that into another batch, and now you're starting a sour mash. Uh, corn based mash. So, I mean, that's one thing it can be used good for. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can just uh, leave it out for the chickens or throw it out, uh, whatever else you want to do with it. But that's about where we're at. So, um, let me move this out of the way, and I've got, oh, I'm all the way up to here now, so I've poured enough water in here that I've got probably five gallons. Oh, I know that I'm at about, about nine and a half percent ABV. I'm happy with that. Um, what the next thing to do is to, yep, I got the right temperature, is to double check the temperature, but now we need to test the pH. You're supposed to remind me. I just got to find my pH meter, and I was sitting right here. Uh huh. Right there it is. So we'll do one last check on the pH before we transfer this into our fermenter. And then once in the fermenter, um, once in the fermenter, all we're going to do is add some yeast nutrient, you know, maybe a can of tomato paste, and some yeast. Well, by golly. I'd show you this, but it would change before I got it to you. It's 5.6, so I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm happy with that. Clean that off in just a little bit. Look, you got any questions? Send them in. You've seen it. It works. It's simple. It's straightforward. I can't wait to get to the next step. Distilling. Happy distilling.